uh, good morning everyone my name is himil and i am in bharti vidyapeet uh, i am in computer engineering second year and today i am going to talk about the tragedy of testing uh, but before we start uh, i would like to say that my style of giving talks is interactive so if you have any questions just like uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask out uh because i only have one screen right now i am not might not be able to see the chats but we'll look into them later um so a little disclaimer all of this is my experience as a back end developer and i'm like i'm not hired professionally by any company i just do freelancing so take everything that you see with a grain of salt because i haven't worked in teams essentially uh so in this talk i am going to assume everyone is familiar with unit tests and tdd is there anyone who is not familiar with those concepts i think those are integral part of any development uh yes uh, so i let me just see the chats are there any yes so i am assuming everyone is familiar with those uh so the tragedy that i'm going to talk about is cargo cults and cargo cults basically mean blind followers like cargo cult programming refers to doing the thing that what everyone else is doing without like thinking yourself because every problem has a context and every solution has that context uh, himil uh, uh, if you are sharing your screen we can't see that Ah uh, wait, one second. I don't know how it got disabled. Uh, yes, so, now we can see your screen. Yes, so I was saying the tragedy that I'm that I'm talking about is cargo calls because every problem has a solution, but that solution has a bit of context around it. And if you don't, and if you lose kind of that context, the solution becomes meaningless because different problems have different solutions under different circumstances. so basic idea is there is no one rule that fits all and we need to use our own brains to kind of you know see what things we can use and what things we should not use in our context in the problem domain that we have in the teams that we have given the skills that we have all right uh so can anyone explain to me what is testing um dirat <laughs> would you uh yeah testing is actually uh, some means whatever you are writing or you are developing something you just verify whether it's working as uh, expected what was your thought before you started uh, developing anything so testing is for that means you are validating whatever you have did you did so i define testing as uh ensuring that your software works as per the specification right uh any everyone with me on this any other opinions on testing no all good yes so can you can anyone like unmute yourself and tell me what are the types of testing so i can say people generally categorize is based on what type what they are as of now testing for example people have unit uh, testing some people could talk integration some there is system level testing and uh, then uh, in hardware kind of domain where i work we basically we don't actually do kind of unit testing but we call it as a uh, block driven testing or unit driven testing kind of approach yeah at the end it's unit testing uh the answer is it depends and uh, this was a trick question it actually depends on what are you categorizing test by right so for example let's say you are categorizing test by how much test code is like how much your code is executed then unit test integration test uh, end to end test or symptom test uh, end to end test or system test is the right answer but for example if you say who is executing those tests then it may be automated or manual right or it can be who is like which entity is executing for example this is a programmer executing those tests or do you have a qa team executing those tests right so the types depends on the different categories which category are you talking about uh so let's focus on to unit tests 
my main like uh, my first gripe with unit tests is that they are very very focused on object oriented programming and uh, for example any example that you see basically every example every blog is talking about objects and classes and this kind of alienates other programmers for example programmers coming from c uh, like structure they use structured programming they don't use uh, object oriented programming or maybe other programmers coming from other paradigms like functional programming languages and uh, the irony of this is unit tests actually kind of work the best when you have pure functions when there are no side effects unit testing is very easy and should be done and always should be done when you have like functions with no side effects they are the best fit for uh, unit testing and what the hell is a unit anyway like uh, you all do unit testing what do you test on like is it a class is it a function is it a method like do you test constructors and destructors what is a unit right so and after unit testing for a while i realized that kind of the thought leaders uh, for example kent beck says that you should test units of behavior but behavior is still very vague what is behavior so let's say i have this class some object uh, and this has a dependency for doing something and this object has a function foo which uses this dependency and adds to to the whatever the result of this uh, dependency was uh, is this code clear like is there any confusion in this code nope 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 right uh, so here's the implementation of dependency i'm just returning five in bar function but in reality this might be this might perform some complicated calculations it might in turn use other dependencies and then return the answer right so how do we unit test this would anyone like to tell me no one actually uh, what i think your uh, dependency Uh, bar function that will be already tested uh, inside your some dependency so you should test that uh, function which is which is in some dependency if you are testing if that is working then you can say it it will work in this context whatever code you have shown so uh i would say most people would try mocking because that's the first thought in because as soon as you say a dependency the first thing people say is mock it out right because that the dependency itself will be tested somewhere else now the problem okay i'll get back to that uh but this is my reaction to this uh this is kgf dialog if anyone does not recognize and this is essentially like i don't like mocking because reasons and Uh, but also the realization that mocking there are places where mocking is essential there is no good way to test the software other than mocking so uh, i want to this show why mocking is bad in this case right so what changes do we need to do in the code to enable us to mock this dependency would anyone like to unmute themselves no one okay the first thing we'll need to do is make this dependency uh, make this bar function virtual so that we can override that in derived classes uh next thing we'll need to change this some object class to one explicitly taken this dependency and now this dependency is no more a value object it will become a reference object because we are using inheritance okay, uh, so here we have this some object class uh, we have this reference to a dependency uh, we need to add this constructor uh, some object which takes in the dependency and initializes it and this foo function remains the same 
uh, a quick quiz. What happens if we remove the ampersand and make dependency a normal variable? That would be a composition. Hmm? Object slicing issue. Object slicing, exactly. So if we don't put this ampersand, even if even even though the function bar is virtual, it will actually only call the uh, method. Uh, it will actually only call the function in the base class. So virtual functions are not dispatched if the object is not a reference or a pointer. And we need to create a mock in our test code. So we'll have a class called mock dependency and it will publicly inherit from this dependency and we'll override this bar function to return to, for example, because we don't want false positives. We won't return five. We'll return two. Right? Any confusion so far? Nope. Okay. And the way we would test this is we would have this work dependency dependency. We'll create this object and we'll assert that calling four returns four. Any confusion in this slide? Nope. Let's see. But I want you all to take a step back and think about what we have actually tested. Have we actually tested that foo returns seven or have we tested that foo adds two to whatever the result of bar? Uh, we tested uh, foo returning seven. No, we tested no? foo returning four because we overrided the dependency to return two <clears throat> and foo mm -hmm. adds two. Yeah. We tested yes. that when we tested that foo adds two to whatever bar gives us. Any confusion in this slide? No. Anyone? You have to test the class. You have made changes to the design of the class. Yes. So that, that's uh, something which is uh, a bug, we could say. You are actually making changes to a class to see whether the class is working proper or not. So these changes could have been done even earlier. So these problems were known even before you started with testing. Uh, is that a question? Is that a remark? Uh, it's both because how could you make a change to a class just to suit your testing? It should be other way around. You should have a test case first and then you could actually go ahead uh, writing a class to fulfill that requirement. That's true. And that's exactly my point over here. Okay. The point is in order to unit test this class because see, for example, in this case, it's just a trivial function returning five. What happens in uh, in my domain basically is this other dependency is usually something that talks to the database and you cannot unit test something in the conventional sense of it because to test the like the other thing interacts with the database properly. You need to have a like you need to have the database up and running and you need to ensure that they talk properly, right? So most people don't end up testing that other part that actually talks to the database. And also you need to make changes to your code to ensure that it is testable. It is by design. You cannot keep you cannot keep the same design and also test it reliably unless you are really an expert. And that's the point you the need. Is like if somebody gives me a code, say hmm. if, uh, 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 Mr. Suresh gives me a code. Mm -hmm. so I'm not supposed to make the changes to the code. I'm supposed to find out what's right or what's wrong in that particular code. Yes, but uh, I'm not talking about bug fixing in this case. I'm just talking about testing. Uh, just to add on here. Uh, so uh, when Suresh will give you a code, that will be kind of a black box testing and that will not be unit testing. Unit yes. testing is supposed to be done by the one who is developing the code. Right. And the scenario, I, because I, what Hemil is talking, I also face this that sometimes the, um, you know, the code return or the class return is not testable in the form of unit test. And then to suit that unit testing or to make the unit testing easier, you do some changes in the design of the code, not a functionality. Yeah. Very correct. So here, my only point of what I'm adding to the same thing, our entire process should have started with thinking about test first. And then we would have gone ahead with developing the code. If you are the developer, 
then the developer should not be thinking about the code. He should have been thinking about the test first. And then he could have gone ahead developing a code which satisfies the test. Uh, are you talking about TDD? Yeah, of course. That's how we should go ahead. Yes, uh, I have it in my slides. Okay. Yeah, but think about, so can we go back to why do we test in the first place? Can anyone tell me why do we test? We test, test to ensure that the intended functionality, whatever is required, uh, is written correctly or it, the, the class is satisfying that functionality requirement. Check if we, check, we write test to check if the software is working correctly, right? So in this case, what do you mean that the software is working correctly? Do you mean that foo returns seven or do you mean that foo adds to, to, the water, to whatever result bar gives it? You what had already mentioned it. You said it is like whether it fulfills the specifications or not. You yes. have defined it. Here's the thing. The fact that foo uses dependency at all is an implementation detail. Why do you care if foo needs a dependency or not? Why, like, shouldn't it matter? The only thing that should matter is the fact that foo returns seven after doing some calculations. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Any confusion and any disagreements? The specification of foo is that upon calling it returns seven somehow in this case. And now think about what we have actually tested. The thing that we have tested right now is that foo adds to to whatever bar gives it. Have we actually tested if our software works or have we tested if foo returns adds to to whatever bar gives us? Yeah, the second side because we don't know whether uh, that dependency is working internal dependency is working or not database connection and all those things are in place or not we don't know that we are just uh, testing that okay my function is returning correct value or not exactly now what should we test instead It should test that whole flow that all should the dependencies are in place or not. It should test that foo return seven. That's suspect. Foo return seven. In all conditions, foo return seven. There are no conditions, there's no loops, there's nothing. Foo return seven. That is the spec. From the code, we can see that is the spec. The only thing we should test is foo returning seven. We don't care if it uses one dependency, if it has 10 dependency, it doesn't matter as long as it returns seven. So that's my first point. So here's how you would test it. You would create some object and now this some object will not need to take a reference to the dependency. Dependency can now be passed in as value. And so we can use this in place construction. So we create some object, we pass in the, uh, actually we don't even need to pass in the dependency because some object can just default initialize dependency. We don't even need to pass the dependency over there. We can just assert that so.foo equals seven. Does that make sense? Any disagreements? No? No one disagrees? Okay. And now take a step back and think about what have we done to our code. To make this testable, we needed to use, first thing we needed to use public inheritance, right? Second thing, we lost our value semantics because if we don't need to inject the dependency, we can just default construct the dependency inside the class. We don't need dependency injection. And because now we needed to mock it, we needed to inject the dependency and we needed to use a derived class. So we needed to use a reference. And value semantics is one of the most important features of C++, I believe, because it allows us to reason about the code in an isolated manner. Because if you see other languages where everything is a pointer by default, if two things have a pointer to the same object and one changes that object, the other can see that change as well. 
and that breaks kind of the isolation. In C++, the biggest advantage is if something is a value, then you have a copy of it and no other like object function class can change it. The most important thing though is that we have tightly coupled our implementation detail to the tests. Because we are not testing if foo returns seven. We are testing if foo adds two to the result of bar. And var just happens to return five. I cannot emphasize this point enough. We are not testing the code. We are testing if the code interacts properly with its dependencies. And that is a problem because, for example, what if there's a bug in this dependency and we are returning three instead of five? And some of you might say, well, yeah, uh, just unit test dependency properly. And that's cool. But what if dependency is talking to the database? You cannot unit test talking to the database. You need the database up and running. And that will be an integration test. And most people won't integration test enough or at least as often as they do unit tests. So this bug will take a lot longer to find than otherwise if you had done it in unit tests. Is this point clear? Uh, no disagreements. That's weird. Is there something in chat, deals? No, I don't think there is nothing. Yep. No disagreements. Okay, that's weird. Unit test folks just say, "Eh, you have a bug." Mocking couples the test code to the structure of the implementation detail. And we are not actually testing the behavior. And this is very important because it gets in the way of refactoring. What if you realize that you actually don't need this dependency? This dependency is a class that is only used inside some object, so you might as well just remove it and inline the code inside foo. What if you change some object to return five plus two or return seven directly? All your tests break. And your code still works because all of your unit tests depend on dependency being passed in through the constructor and then being called because you are going to mock it. So you are going to assert that this function was called and return five or return two. Right? Any disagreements? None. The biggest problem with mocking is it is that it gets in the way of refactoring our code, which is bad, very, very bad, because now you are in the situation where a developer comes up with a better design and that design does not break the public API of the behavior of or of the specification, but it changes internally how that function works or how that class works. And now all your tests break. So you have hundreds of thousands of failing tests and now developers are like incentivized to keep the same structure because they don't want thousands of tests failing and they know that code is working but thousands of tests fail. So now you have a structure where developers are starting to ignoring test failures. So you come up in a, you join a new organization. They have a thousand tests and 200 of them fail. And now you have no idea if it's your problem or if the code isn't working. And you go up to a like coworker and he's like, yeah, these tests always fail, ignore them. So you are in a situation where people are not refactoring because it will break hundreds of tests, even though they know they have the right code. And you have a culture of ignoring test failures because you know that those tests don't test anything, which is a really bad combination. Anyone would like to disagree? No one? Everyone has been bitten by this. So I call this ruthless refactoring, just being able to make changes to the internal implementation detail without like as long as the code works, the test should not break. Right? So 
but you come up to me and you say databases are slow file systems are slow network requests are slow and i will reply when was the last time that you checked because just yesterday i was testing postgres 11.4 i believe and inserting a thousand rows without any fancy stuff like just a thousand inserts took about 150 milliseconds and selecting those thousand rows took about 50 milliseconds and that's uh, the uh, the hard drive was a 500 gb kingston ssd the cheapest one i could find and if you say that for example because a unit test is very small it, it cannot like it should not take more than 500 milliseconds to run one test and i say if you have that limit you can have 10 queries selecting a thousand rows per unit test which i feel is more than sufficient for whatever definition of unit that you have any disagreements No one. But there are always exceptions to everything. Right? So, for example, if you have a piece of code that is interacting with the payment gateway, you don't actually want to, you know, transfer money every time you run the test because that may be every one minute, every five minutes, every ten minutes. You don't want to transfer the money. So mocking is only the real solution there. There's no other way around it. Another example where you need to unit test is caching. And this example is in Martin Fowler's blog. I forgot the exact thing, but in one of his blogs, he explained this. For example, if you have a caching layer and you want to test that if, if the thing that you're trying to find is inside the cache, then it should not hit the database or external resource. That resource may be uh, some file system, uh, database, uh, some other server. The only real predictable way to test it is uh, mocks because otherwise you can come up with clever ways, for example, timing the operation and seeing how much time it takes to hit the cache and hit the external resource, but that's not very predictable. So the only good way of testing a caching layer is mocking. Anyone disagrees? Okay, so in general, if you have either, if you have things that are awkward to test without mocks, then use mocks, but try to avoid them as much as you can. So in summary, mocking forces you to change your code to use public inheritance, because how else would you mock it? Uh, it couples the test to the structure of your code, and it gets in the way of refactoring. But that's not the whole story. Excuse me. Uh, so there are actually two styles of unit testing. The London School, which is the mockus, which unfortunately is the most popular way of testing. And the Detroit School, which is the classicists, which basically are like, if your object has some dependencies, let the object do its thing and only test the output of the code. Given this object in this state, I, if I call this function, this happens, right? There are no mocks or they avoid mocks, but there are cases as, as I explained earlier that you cannot avoid mocks, right? So prefer to use the Detroit school of unit tests as much as you can. And if, when you can't do it, uh, go back to mocks. Uh, now let's go with test driven development. Uh, anyone here familiar with test-driven development? I assume you all are, but uh, anyone here not familiar with TDD? No one? So the basic Familiar, idea... but not practice too much. Okay, uh, what's your name, sir? Actually, I can't see your name. <laughs> Satle. Uh, what, sorry? The name's... The name's Satle. Ankur Satle. Ankur? No way. Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi. So basically, it's the practice of writing tests before you write the implementation. And the most famous way to do TDD is Uncle Bob uh, 
uh, uh, Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob, who uh, says red green refactor. So red is the step where you write a failing test, and you write green is the step where you write just enough code to make that test pass, and then R is the step where you refactor. So refactor your code, and you end up in this loop, right? So would anyone like to answer this question? Is TDD a testing technique? I believe it's more a development uh, way. Miss, mm -hmm. uh, so while writing how, what all things you should uh, think. So that's why they say test driven development. Means when you are writing your code, you need to think about the testing at that time only. You can think yes. of it as a process rather than a technique per se. Yes, so the name is unfortunate and uh, about six months or a year of getting into TDD, you realize it's not a testing technique, but it is a design process. And the first question that came into my mind was when I learned that it was a design testing uh, design technique. So can we throw away the tests after designing? Would anyone like to answer this question? I think practically no. TDD people say no, but my argument is you just said it was a design technique and most people practicing TDD will mock everything out. So I have already proved earlier that you are not testing anything if you use mocking. Very rarely should you use mocking and only as a proxy. It's not a real indicator of your software working. So if that's the case, why can't we throw away the tests after we are done with the designs? And I want to argue here that it is a really bad design technique, in my opinion. OK, not really bad, but a quite bad design technique. And this is because while doing TDD, I'm laser focused on one single component. And I am thinking about what is the next wrong input that can break my code. And I write a test. I make the implementation work so that it returns the proper error. I refactor it, I add another test for the next wrong input. And I do this until I have exhausted all my wrong inputs. And then I sit and design all the tests for all the valid inputs. And the thing is, it can uncover some defects in design. But I, in my experience, Designing happens when you are looking at the actual usage of the component that you are building. For example, I had in one of the apps I was writing for my client. Uh, we had a scenario where we had, for example, if the backend returns this response code on any API request, uh, the user is invalid, re-authenticate re the user. And there were some other there were some other conditions that I wanted to do on every HTTP uh, request. So I ended up TDDing and designing like a library on top of the default HTTP library, and it was object oriented and elegant, so called, and TDD everything. But after through this six or so months of using that library. Now I have come to realize that you, I didn't actually need all those classes and inheritance and such. I just needed a very simple function. And that insight, that design insight came from looking at the usage of the component, not from looking at the usage of the test because the tests, like they tell you some things. For example, they might tell you that, you know, you have too many dependencies, but you can find that out on your own looking at just at the code. You don't need the test for that. Right. And I believe the rest of the design insight comes from actually sitting down and thinking, actually looking up at the code, staring at the code and thinking, how do I expect the users to use it? How is this currently being used by the users of this component? What is like, 
you know just sitting and thinking it's not about writing the test the test might uncover some defects in your design but it's really just about sitting down and designing because thinking playing around experimenting failing and trying again because it's a continuous process there is no end to this journey and but i believe it's a good testing technique not a design technique because you are laser focused on one component and hemil you are, you you muted your mic uh, my mistake uh, when did this happen <laughs> this just now with this slide okay so oh, i don't know what's happening right now just uh, one line just one line dekho yep so uh, i believe it is a fundamentally good testing technique because when i am doing tdd i am laser focused on one particular component and i am trying to write tests for all possible conditions that i can think of that can break this component for example what are the invalid inputs for this particular component i am finding the next invalid input writing a test case guarding against it ensuring my software works against all the bad inputs and then i am writing the test case for the successful inputs so it is a really good testing technique for this one particular component because you are you are testing for all possible cases that you you can think of and it you know it it's like training wheels but it gives you a very systematic way to test the entire component thoroughly as much as you can uh i also want to say that uh, 100% test coverage there are a lot of people who have like who brag about 80% coverage 90% coverage 95% 98% i just want to say that it really doesn't mean anything because 100% test coverage usually translates into statement coverage and it just means that at least one of the tests has hit one line of code oh, sorry at least out of all your tests that one line of code is at least executed once it does not tell you if your software works works as per the spec it does not tell you if you have covered all possible corner cases it really doesn't mean anything and there's something called as good hearts law which says that when a measure becomes a target it ceases to be a good measure so for example if your company has a particular for example let's say you, your company mandates that you need 80% coverage to check in some code that's not always a great idea 100% branch coverage on the other hand might mean something that you have at least tested all of the corner cases that you thought of it still doesn't mean your software works as per spec but it, it it's like the minimum standard that if you can you should try to achieve and i on um, i want to point out that there is no bug free software all software has bugs even if you have 100% test coverage everything there will be some scenario that you have not think of because we are humans and humans make mistakes any questions so far no one okay. i have some opinions i think we should talk towards the end sure uh i also want to say this that tdd is often associated with unit testing but tdd isn't unit testing and i believe that tdd in integration tests is a great way to ensure that the back end works in my experience because for example now i can if i liberate myself from the idea that i need to tdd in units and i can talk to the database i can hit the network then i can write tests like for example in the back end we have if i send a post request to this url with this body i should get this response right and it allows me to implement my back end in any way i want i can change anything i want i can refactor i can add classes i can add methods i can remove them and none of my tests break as long as the output is correct which allows ruthless refactoring because once you start becoming sloppy with refactorings it's a downhill there is no going back and tdd integration tests ensure that i am doing the right thing for example in the back end really the the tests my tests tend to be if i hit this api with this request these are the database tables that get updated or inserted or deleted 
Now, as long as that holds, I really don't care how my software is implemented because I can refactor it to a better design as long as my software works, as long as I return the correct responses. Any questions so far? Uh, so, TDD is not equal to professionalism. Uh, Uncle Bob has this thing where he says that if you don't do TDD, you are not a professional. And that makes me cringe every time I see it, I read it. And that's because it's a tool in your toolbox. It's not, there are a lot of cases where I personally want to experiment with different designs. I don't want to bottle, like, I don't want to write tests. I'm just experimenting. I'm playing around with what I can do. And it's like, if I don't write tests, like if I don't write tests before the implementation, I'm somehow not professional. And that's weird because every professional understands that there is no one size fits all. So that's just weird. Not true at all. Please don't follow him if you are. He, some of his things just don't make any sense. And there's often this association also credit due to Uncle Bob that TDD is equal to clean code. That if you do TDD, you will get clean code. There's no guarantee. TDD is a feedback mechanism. If Even if you think of TDD as a way to design your code, it is a feedback mechanism. But it's the humans who need to understand those feedback. For example, if you have a component that has like 10 dependencies and you are not seeing that you need to mock 10 things just so that you, you can write a test for it, you're not learning anything and there's no guarantee that TDD will produce clean code. And this association is a marketing gimmick and I don't want to get into it anymore. So anyone familiar with BDD? No one? Yes, at awareness level. Awareness level. So, here's the original post by Dan North, who introduced TDD. And just uh, if you haven't read this post, please go ahead and read it. It's a beautiful post. Uh, but this website, blog, whatever, starts with this statement. I had a problem. While using and teaching agile practices like TDD on projects with different environments, I kept coming across the same confusion and mis misunderstandings. Programmers wanted to know where to start, what to test, what not to test, how much to test, what to call the test, and to understand why a test fails. And he explains in this post that uh, Alongside, wait, let me just go to that paragraph. So he says that Chris, uh, Eric Evans published his book, uh, Domain Driven Design, in about the same time. And they realized that they were trying to define a ubiquitous language for the design analysis process, not the design, the analysis process. And they say that they have a story template that looks like this. As an X, I want Y, so that's Z. Let's going back to my presentation. So this is the template. As X, X is the role of the end user that is using the software at this point. So for example, as an accountant, I want the annual reports so that I can, uh, so that for example, let's say I can uh, like see where the, diff uh, where the business is working really well and where the business is not working well. So this emphasizes the role of the user using the application, the function, uh, which is X, the functionality that the software is expected, which is Y, and the business case for that functionality, which is Z, because the business case is also a very important part of the requirements. And he says that this easily translates to this template, which is given this component. When I do this, then see happens. So for example, give like given authenticate function. When I enter incorrect password, 
I am displayed with a dialog box that says the password is incorrect, for example. And I tend to, my test cases tend to be A should do B under C. So for in this case, A is like the component under test that may be an object, a class, a um, function, a method, anything should do B. B is the behavior that I expect out of the, out of the object. And under C, which is the circumstances, the environments under which A is expected to do B. And if you think of BDD as just a way to rename your tests so that you can think about the behaviors of the application more, then it is a great technique. But I tend to, uh, and yes, my test. Uh, so one example of my test name would be um, authenticate should throw invalid password when uh, the hash password in the database does not match the password hash of the input. And yes, my test cases, the names of my test cases tend to be long. But if you think about BDD as end users writing acceptance tests in English, then it's just the fact that the end users don't care. I use hundreds of thousands of applications every day from, for example, Discord, or GCC, or Clang, or GDB, and in, uh, or you know even social media like Facebook or Twitter, and I don't care about writing those test cases because it's the developer, it's the organization's responsibility, it's the developer's responsibility to test. It's not my responsibility to test, right? And I'm here to argue that unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests are not great ways to categorize this because what you are really doing is I tend to categorize tests into two major categories, design tests and functional tests. And that gives me the vocabulary. For example, if I'm doing TDD for as a design technique, then it gives me the power to design, like delete those tests after I'm done with the design. And when I want to change it, refactor it into something else, even if I'm using design tests, I know I can throw it away because they are not actually testing if my software works. And second is functional tests, which like given this API request on this URL, uh, like given this post request on this URL with this body, this is the output I expect from my backend. And those are functional tests. I don't care about the implementation details. And that allows me to ruthlessly refactor my code into any design I want, as long as my software works. And I want to end this talk with just saying that there is no one rule. There is only one rule in software that there are no rules. Every problem, every team, every domain has different circumstances and different pressures on it because of which something that, that works for me might not work for you and things that work for you might not work for me. And with that, I would like to say thank you.